my channel, it's me, Illy. Today I'm gonna react to three disturbing true stories. And yeah, I hope you guys love this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And yeah, let's go. This happened in October 2019. My friends and I were in the military at the time, stationed in Colorado. We heard about this haunted road called the Riverdale Road from one of our friends that was originally from Colorado. There were several different legends about the road, like stories about a ghost jogger tapping on people's windows, bloody handprints on road signs, Native American shapeshifters, ghostly hitchhikers, the list really goes on. The legend that matters for this story, however, is that of a phantom Camaro. The legend goes that a guy crashed on the road back in like the 60s or 70s as he was going too fast down the road, which has a lot of twists and turns on it. And now he haunts the road trying to race people to their death. Anyway, my friend said he'd been there several times, but nothing ever happened. Mm -hmm. With it being October and all, the rest of my friends and I really wanted to go so that we could maybe experience something spooky. So we all went super late on a Sunday night, like one in the morning. So it was technically Monday morning, I guess. Anyway, there were five of us to include myself all in one car. My friend who was a Colorado native said he went to high school with a guy who died on the road and the guy had a cross somewhere along the road. So since a couple of the guys had to pee anyway, we all pulled over where the cross was so that they could go off to pee somewhere while the rest of us looked at the cross. It was extremely dark outside and completely quiet aside from our footsteps in the grass and the words we exchanged. We were only standing outside for a couple minutes tops. Before literally out of nowhere, this car races around the bend of the road and drives past us. One of my friends made a joke. Oh, it must be the Camaro. We all left, but as the car completely passed us, we saw that the taillights were indeed that of a Camaro. At that moment, all of us scrambled back into the car, and by the time we were all inside and beginning to drive away, the Camaro mm -hmm. was right behind us, following us. Car that turned around. This is fucking wild. Yo. This is fucking oh wild. Oh my god. <laughs> you guys scared? This is how we died. Yeah, it's fucking wild. It matched the description of the legend perfectly. It was an old black Camaro with a busted headlight. My friend who was driving was freaking out, and rightfully so. He told her to just drive the speed limit, because the legend says if you try to speed, then you die. So we went the speed limit for the rest of the road with this Camaro riding our ass. It was so close to us. The quote-unquote driver of the Camaro even turned off the headlights, which was really weird considering how dark it was outside, and they could have easily hit us without being able to see. Wait. As soon as we reached the end of what was considered Riverdale Road and were about to turn off of it, the Camaro stopped and turned around and started back in the other direction. Now, I don't know if the Phantom Camaro was real or if the legend is based off some crazy person, but it was just weird how the car literally came out of nowhere. It was so silent outside. We would have heard it coming far sooner than when it came around the corner of the road. Plus, what kind of person would be out on this rural road at 1 in the morning on a Monday That's night? Crazy. I don't know. I personally believe in the paranormal, so I think it was a ghost. Mm -hmm. But I try not to push my beliefs onto other people. We have an ad. Story number two. That's crazy. Oh, that's creepy. My name is Ben. This happened back in 2007 up in the high desert in California. Around this time, Highway 138 was under long-term construction. I lived in a town called Felon where everything was spread so far apart it would take 15 to 20 minutes just to get to the nearest gas station or food joint. I went to high school up there and was a senior with a longtime girlfriend. She lived in Wrightwood, which was a long drive from my house that meant crossing two highways. My mother would work long, tiring shifts and would sleep when she got home, so asking her was out. Instead, I would hitch a ride on my girlfriend's bus to her house after school, usually on Fridays since no school the next day. Getting home was the issue, though as it was 15 miles between our houses and I would be walking. I had done the walk so many times I learned okay. secret pathways down the mountain through the desert that would cut my walk by an hour, though it usually meant being in the middle of nowhere. What? But the scariest thing to happen to me wasn't necessarily in the lonely desert, but in the street. I was dumb and lazy and would sometimes hitchhike. I usually got picked up by parents of schoolmates who recognized me or something, but not often. No. One day I was walking. It was around 6 p.m., I believe, as the sun was fading, 
and a man named Charlie pulled up in a big red van. He asked if I wanted a ride, and I said, sure. Sure. As soon as I got in, something That's was number one, no. He was twitchy and looked abnormally thin. His cheeks were sucked in and looked exhausted, but wired. He stared at me for what felt like a long time. By the time I realized I was uncomfortable, the van was already moving down Highway 2. He talked a lot, mentioning that he had a friend named Carlos. He talked about Carlos a lot and asked questions I couldn't possibly answer, like if I knew him or if I liked his house and if he treats me well. I told him I don't know a Carlos. I realized at this point he wasn't taking me to Highway 138. Stupid. Normally when someone picks me up, they go down Highway 2 to Highway 138. It was literally the only route you could take without going through the desert. When I asked about it, he told me too many cars are held up because of the construction and he knew a quicker route through the desert. He actually pulled through the route I usually took on foot, and my heart sank. I was about to end up alone in the desert with him. He continued to talk about Carlos as I searched for something to hold on to. I found a small screwdriver in his passenger door compartment and tucked it in my hand. He mentioned that I should meet Carlos, and that he could get me a lot of money. I assured what? him that he wasn't interested, but it was like he didn't hear me. He told me he was going to take me to meet him. Again, I told him I was fine and I was in high school and didn't need to make mm -hmm. money. I looked outside and realized I knew the area. There were a few houses in this part of the desert, just randomly thrown here and there. I mm -hmm. walked past them before. He veered down one that was further away on its own. I knew he was going to take me there no matter what I said. Mm -hmm. He drove right through the open gate and parked. I heard an endless howling of dogs as he pulled up and told me to get out to meet Carlos. What? I was scared. I could hear my breathing getting louder. Uh -huh. I considered attacking him then, but I panicked. He got Panic. out, and I saw the full form that was Charlie. He was tall, at least 6'3", and definitely was tripping on something. He wobbled like a child trying to stand. That was crazy. He went around and opened my door, then started to yell. The house was a two-story house, built well for a desert house that was clean and crisp, not the scary, run-down places you'd imagine. An average height guy came out. He was older, maybe in his 60s. He had white facial hair and a shaved head. He looked at me and didn't look away as he told Charlie to go inside. And he did. Carlos asked me what I wanted, and I said to go home, that he was giving me a ride. He stared at me and pointed to the gate and said to leave. And I did. I walked to the gate, and as soon as I felt safe, I ran. I didn't stop. As soon as I could, I called the police on my prepaid Nokia and told them everything. I still walked home and sat on my bed. I was stunned and didn't know what to do. The he police never lucky. contacted me after that day. I didn't tell my mom or girlfriend. I didn't what? want them giving me grief for it. After all of it, I still took the bus to see her, but I made sure I had a secure ride home after, or at least learn the public bus Don't schedules. Don't ever get somebody's car no matter what if you don't know the person I still person remember person, how huh? hard my heart was beating Hell no. and how scared it was of what could have happened that's crazy when I was 12 I had what I believe was the last sleepover of my life it was at my friend Nick's grandma's house she had a very old-fashioned house that, looking back at now, kind of gives me the creeps thinking about. I had been over to it a couple times, but never slept over. His grandma had a spare bedroom with two twin beds, which is why it seemed perfect for a sleepover. There was also this park connected to the backyard where we played hide-and-seek during the day. As it got darker out, his grandma called us back inside for dinner. She made linguine and clam sauce. We begged her to let us go back outside after eating to play flashlight tag in the dark. She eventually allowed it. Since her backyard basically connects to the park with the only barrier being a bunch of trees and no fence, the game area ranged from the backyard to a certain point in the park past the trees. What? We started the game with you it being my turn as the seeker. Basically, I just had to find Nick and aim my flashlight at him and that would be considered catching him. Mm -mm. I counted down from 30 to give him time to hide. Then I left his grandma's house through the back door to begin oh, looking. Yeah. I checked some of the obvious immediate hiding spots, like under the tables, behind the chairs, by the shed. It seemed the backyard was clear so far. I heard cracks coming from the direction of the trees in front of the park. 
I shine my light over into the woods, revealing someone tall, covered from head to toe in what appeared to be a giant sheath. As my light lit up the figure, they turned to face me. I could tell because I could see two eye holes and a small mouth hole. What in the world was I looking at? I called out Nick's name, asking if that was him. Though I didn't have any idea where he could have gotten that sheet all of a sudden. I didn't have too much time to wonder about that, though, because Nick came out of the trees, yelling at me to run inside the house. Whoever was under that sheet wasn't Nick. He rushed to tell his grandma, whose response was to lock all the doors. She comforted us, telling us we're safe mm -hmm. inside. However, later that night, when the two of us were in the spare bedroom downstairs, both in our respective beds, laying awake at like midnight just talking, we heard a couple thumps coming from upstairs. We looked at each other and wondered if that could be his grandma, whose bedroom was upstairs after all. I figured that's what it probably was, forgot about it, and eventually fell asleep. The next morning, Nick's grandma knocked on the guest bedroom door and came in. It was like 8 in the morning, and she was asking us which of us opened the window in the other spare bedroom upstairs and let all the cold air in. We said neither of us, but she didn't believe us. So she had us follow her up to the bedroom. She seemed quite angry. Man. She pointed at the wide open window. Still, we said neither of us did it. Then she went to the bed and asked, what's this? As she picked up a dirty looking crumpled up sheet thrown on the bed. She smelt it and was taken aback by its apparently horrible smell. I said, wait, and asked her to lay the sheet flat on the bed. She did so. And that's when I saw the three holes in the sheet, the eye holes and the mouth hole. That's when Nick and I knew and told her about the person in the trees under the sheet. She immediately had us leave the house with her to go next door where she called the police. When the police showed up, two of them searched the house while my grandma stayed out front with a third police officer. Um. There was nobody found inside the house, but the method of entry was very easy to figure out. Whoever it was jumped off a railing in the backyard onto the awning where they were able to easily open the window and climb Man. in. Nothing appeared to be stolen or broken. Thank God I didn't have to stay there another night, nor did Nick. In fact, his parents had his grandma stay with them for a few days just in case. I think the scariest part would be worrying that whoever it was never left the house. Oh my and that the God. police might have overlooked their hiding spot. That's crazy. That's so crazy. OMG. I have a story. When I was like 11... Me and my friend, we was coming from, like, we was done with school. It was around, like, 4 o'clock p.m. And it started to get dark. No, You know, wintertime, like, right now, it started to get darker earlier. And I, I was just walking. But when we used to go, like, to our house, there's, like, this road is, like, creepy as hell. It's, like, no cars around, no homes like that. So it was, like, a long walk, like, 10, 15 minutes. And we used to walk like every day to go to school back and forth. So it started to get dark. So me and my friend, we was talking, but we felt like somebody is following us. And it was this car. It was like busted, like broken, like almost broken. Now, I don't know how the fuck that car was fucking going. They, they didn't have the two back doors. That was so fucking weird. First of all, how the fuck the back doors don't like they're they're not even there it's just open space and there was three men with beards they looking like bums basically like bums the car was looking like bums i see them i'm looking at them they're talking to us right trying to get our attention they're like where are you guys going i know your father i know your mom and this and that i'm like i'm not dumb my mom always taught me like don't ever even if somebody says I know your mom and dad, that's what they do to get the kids. And you know what I mean? Like to fucking. And I'm like, no, I never seen you. My friend was doing most of like the talking. But I'm like, no, I, I don't know him. What the fuck? Like, you know? So we kept walking, kept walking. He's still following us, right? The guy in the back, he's starting like to come up. But I see all these fucking ropes and all this shit behind it. I'm like, I'm like, there was a home that the old lady used to live there. Like, she was in her, like, 70s, like, old, old. It was only her, right? So, I'm, like, talking to my friend. Like, I'm like, I think we have to make, like, a move. We can't, like, they're trying to do something to us. Like, take us. Like, in my country, they take, they used to, um like, a year or two, they used to, like, kidnap girls a lot. And then sell them, and the parents would never see them. You know the movie Taken? 
they, that's based on my country um where i live in albania that's where they they like take the kids and shit yeah taken the movie's based in over there they take the fucking young kids and they like just, just get money and just treat them like shit basically just like the movie but in my country that used to happen a lot but i don't know about now but back in the day that's when the like when i seen the movie i'm like fuck you know it made sense a little bit but that's based on where i'm going with it but yeah that's when that was happening a lot back in the day but i don't know about now because i didn't live there in years so when i was younger that happened right so i kept like thinking i'm like i have to make a plan how the fuck well, i'm gonna run away because we can we can't go where we was walking we turned to go the different way so we can get the fuck out of it. like them not following us it was like driving slow as hell and talking to us but i kept like talk i'm trying to look like i'm smart my friend is dumb she's entertaining them talking and shit and i'm like don't entertain them i'm like making a plan i'm looking around right how the fuck am i gonna how are we gonna move like i know my neighborhood so there was not from that my like where we live they're like from some other place or whatever this is like um the bronx to like brooklyn or something they're probably from brooklyn i'm from the bronx you know what i'm saying so they're like in a different place like from the different place because we know when somebody's not from there so we know our neighborhood like where to go and everything so i'm like looking i'm like i have a plan i'm like we're gonna go to this house that is an old lady lives there so we're gonna act like this is our home so me and her acted like we sisters and we jumped into this fucking we opened the door we ran to her like and closed and locked it but it's not like the, it's the outside doors. It's not inside the home. It's like outside, like the in my country they have like doors to like the gates and stuff like that. So I used to remember um old lady used to like I see her all the time. So I'm like okay. So I went and I start yelling, mom, dad, mom, dad. my mom, dad don't live there. The fuck. So I'm just yelling just to scare them, right? And she's like, what do you do? I'm like you fucking yell like. We are sisters. Act like we sisters. We yelling for our parents. And then there was like bang, boom, 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 boom. I'm not make. I swear to God, I'm not making shit up. I we went to the back because I don't want to go inside her home. So the lady, is old lady, she was not even there. Nobody was there. It was just empty. Nobody there. We went to the back, right? So I looked to the street from the back. I know my that's around like my corner of like my home. So I'm like, what the fuck? I, I'm like, they can jump the like the fence, or and then they can come and get us and shit. I'm, I don't want to stay here and get killed or some shit. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I have to run. I'm like, I have to make a plan so we can run, get out of here. I went, I passed the thing and I jumped and I was running, running, running. I left my friend all the way back. I don't give a fuck no more. I'm like, for my life, I had to go, and. I ran, ran. It's starting to get darker and darker. It was like dark. I was running so fast. Like, I swear to God, I, I flew or some shit. I don't know. I was so fast at my fucking place. My friend went to her place. She was like two minutes away from me. So we lived close. So I ran and I'm, and I'm like, I can't breathe. I'm like, my mom is like trying to like yell at me and scream. She's like, you know what time it is? You still like late? You see it's dark, you outside? And I was still young. I was like 11, 12. Still young, you know. In my country, they don't allow girls to just walk around nighttime. So it's starting to get dark because I, we was like staying in the in the, in the back of this old lady's house. So I'm like, I'm like, I have to move. I can't stay here. The car was still there. People were still talking. You can hear them talking everything. I'm like, they're making a plan. How the fuck they gonna get us? So I'm like, no, I'm going to fucking go. Because the home had no lights or nothing. So it was starting to get darker and darker. So I'm like, fuck, we have to leave. We can't stay here. So I was like, I got to run. So after that, my mom started yelling at me. I almost got in trouble. I'm like, I swear to God, somebody, these three men, older men with beards, they didn't have, I was explaining to her the car and everything. My friend, we, then we both was like, and then I said, if you don't believe me, I called my friend and stuff like that. And I was like shaking, like ooh, shaking. <laughs> and yeah, that I don't ever, ever fucking, I never went that same 
place, I always looked around and made sure I don't, you know, go through that no more. But yeah, that was a crazy story. I hope you guys love it. But yeah, I don't, I don't let my kids go to school by themselves. The teacher will send me letters. Oh no, hell no. Mm -mm. I go with you, drop you off, and I'm gonna pick you up. I'm not doing that. It's like five minutes away. What's the point of it? I can take my time. Like no, I don't do that. But after that, my mom didn't have no choice, so I did. I still went to school by myself. But yeah. I hope you guys love this story telling that I told my side and my story a little bit. Sorry for talking too much, but yeah, I hope you guys love it and I'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And yeah, see you next time. Bye.